Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsa coming back with another bullseye of a tutorial here today on the channel. I wanted to talk about Bryson Tiller. I vividly remember in 2017 just looking at the rise of Bryson Tiller. And, you know, he is a, an incredible person, you know, who came with his own sound. He called it the trap, so he gave it his own name. He had his own style and swag. And today I wanted to look at, um, you know, kind of like his chain and like how do you get that type of Bryson Tiller modern day R&B type of um sound. So this was a suggestion by one of my subscribers, you know, he wanted to see the Bryson Tiller slash a Brent Fayez um, vocal chain. So I, I'm going I'm to drop it here today and it's going to be for free. So you guys don't forget, you know, I'm giving out a lot of free templates, a lot of free consoles and chains. You know, don't forget to keep supporting. You know, I'm trying to show y'all love. So show me love back. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and drop more ideas down below. Let's get right to it. So, you know, Bryson Tiller is a pretty interesting person. When I first seen this picture right here it was on Reddit and it says that, you know, this is something from Bryson's uh, Snap Snapchat back in the day, a seven years ago wow time flies and bryson tiller said any place any time and this is what i like a lot this is what i be trying to tell y'all is the mindset you look at bryson he's not making no excuses he says put a microphone in front of me any place anytime i'm ready to go i'm ready to record i'm ready to make some hits and that's what i always try to talk to you guys it's about the love for the game only somebody who truly loves making music could dare say something like that any place anytime put a microphone in me in front of me i do not care Care, I'm going to drop a hit and that's what Bryson Tiller did so that's how he blew it's his mindset I always talk to you guys about that you know it's not about the equipment because Bryson could have been like oh man look at that little ad, that little ad microphone that little ad. man I ain't even trying to record fam I don't even feel like it bro I don't know I just want to go to the real studio to record he could have been like that and you never know he could have not blown so that's what I always try to tell y'all any place anytime I love that mindset by Bryson Tiller and that's what it's all about you know not just in making music in life but your mindset how do you approach stuff because look at how Bryson Tiller is approaching stuff. You don't got to say much. You know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Any place, any time. Look at that little old microphone, which actually this microphone is uh, pretty interesting. It looks like a large type of condenser microphone. Looks like the Neumann TLM 103. And I'm actually talking into that microphone right now. So, um, you know, just really considering the price, um, the price point for that microphone. I'm not going to lie. I would rather just buy a, a UAD sphere is what I'm talking into because you get so many more emulations. I mean, this microphone is a pretty good microphone. It's kind of like related to the 67 and the 87, that same type of capsule. And they're just always known for having a very flat mid range, you know, which is kind of good when it comes to the, um, you know, a singer, a modern R and B singer, kind of like Bryson Tiller, just due to the fact that, you know, that's, the, that's the modern sound. Sometimes you don't want two color. You want it to be just flat, straight, for some people don't like that some people do it all depends on the person's voice but Bryson Tiller it looks like he was you know always singing into a TLM 103 I know Billie Eilish uses this song um the one of the studios I work at um one of the first studios I worked at they had this microphone as well I'm used to this microphone I know it's sound it's a pretty cool microphone but if, if you ask me for a thousand dollars I feel like a, a universal audio sphere is no no it's like not even a decision because with the sphere you'll get more emulations for around the same price but the TLM 103 Maybe if, um, you know, you did go to a studio before and they had one and it sounded good on your voice and you don't record other people, maybe you just might want to go with this microphone because it's your microphone, you know? Sometimes that's how people feel. They got a certain microphone that they like to use because it just literally uh, accommodates their vocal and it works so well with them. So, yeah, that's what we would use um, for Bryson's microphone. I just I just love my Bryson's his little setup. That's a setup he can go anywhere with. And just knowing his mentality, any place, any time, I would not be wasting no time with Bryson. You know, I would just gets uh, something set up for him really quickly as an engineer you got to know what type of timing the artist is on like is this person really chill they, it takes a little time for them to get into their vibe when they come to the studio maybe they gotta you know drink a little something or whatever to get in their vibe you know or some people they just as soon as they come in they're ready to go you know so you have to know how to read people's energy not only when they come into the room but also literally when you're recording them you know i have people who um i always try to tell them like bro you gotta look at the artist while they're making music because the body language is going to tell you if it's a good take or not literally even before you hear it so that's that's real game like that's true game you know what i mean that really helps you get real good recordings you know all the little stuff it's not about the tools it's about you how you communicate with the person how you peep the energy how you peep the vibe you know and you just got to go forward with that next thing that we have is the api 512c i love the api i would use this on bryson tiller's vocal the api is one that came a little bit um you know towards um down the line you know somewhere around the 80s when ssl was coming through with the solid state components 
So solid state components were, they were just a little bit better than the previous tube components that they were using because people felt like, you know, the tubes were always, 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 they were always fighting noise and the console did not help them. So solid state came through with the SSL, you know, um, consoles. Those have solid state components, the API as well. They had their own type of um, consoles. But the thing about the API um, consoles as well is they did have all of those 2520 um, op amps, you know, like inside of the uh, EQs and all that stuff. But I know that the API consoles did not have um compression on every single channel most of the times you'll see them they just have the mic pre and the eq which is like you know like the parametric eq so it's pretty interesting but i know whitney houston used this on um, preamp on one of my favorite albums by her it's called uh you're my baby tonight and i know that uh the engineer who recorded that he said that he loved using this mic pre because it just sounds so mid forward so you have somebody like bryson tiller who he might be singing and some singers sing really loud and some people sing very low you know what i mean but for, i feel like for people who sing like very low or even people who rap very low you might want to use the api because it helps bring the mid-range forward for sometimes you know i feel like for rap music depending on the person's voice and their flow it could become too aggressive because it's so mid-range forward and so punchy and so you know hitting and hitting you know and smacking everything around the place you know this preamp so yeah i feel like for somebody who sings really low this might actually be very good because it's going to give you that energy or maybe somebody who raps with with a lack of energy the tonal coloration from the um 512c or api preamp will help bring some of the life some of the eyes wide open type of energy okay and then the last thing i would use as well with bryson tiller is i would use a warm audio 2a so the reason why i would do that is because i know bryson tiller coming back to this picture bryson's mindset anytime any place i love that mindset anytime any place stop making excuses if you if you feel inspired today make a song about that bit if something happened to you today make make a song make a song tomorrow make a song the day after make a song next week next month next year make a song forever bro because if you really love music just do it straight up so with Bryson peeping Bryson's energy anytime, any place, you know, that's the model for this video today. I'll be like, damn, you know, I'm not going to pick a LA, um, original LA 2A, you know, the big one. Because first of all, it's less ergonomic. You know, Bryson Tiller, he looked like he had a home studio. He used to be recording in his bedroom. He had a mobile rig for the most part. So, you know, something like an LA 2A, the Teletronics one, the throwback one, right? That is like kind of like four um, rack slots, you know? So if you ever seen one in real life, that thing is huge. So the warm audio one is pretty good too because it's, it's more ergonomic. You got to understand in a home studio, you don't have an infinite amount of space. So unless you do, congratulations. But most people, they got a limited amount of space inside of their home studio. So I would pick the warm audio 2a because i still get the great sound of an optical compressor which uses light to do the compression and the tubes to drive the um you know circuitry right but the most important thing is that it's ergonomic it's small i could take it wherever i want you know and it's just gonna fit better inside of a home studio like bryson says anytime any place we're gonna record and you know after that you know this is where i kind of got the inspiration from from uh, brent fayez you know he was in the studio with a la 2a you know brent fayez he's a pretty good singer too i love his music Looks like, you know, in the studio, they got Neves, they got pull text, you know, sometimes these guys are in the studio, but sometimes they don't even use this equipment. You know, it's all it's like a, a piece of furniture, depending on what studio you go to, because sometimes you go to a studio that has this gear and the gear don't even work. You know, that's the thing. You know, people are always trying to push gear, push two microphones on people, but they don't talk about the ownership. You know, sometimes you have this stuff and that bit is hard to use just due to the fact that, you know, sometimes you're using it every day and it starts acting up. You got to service it. There's parts. And then, you know, sometimes those parts, they go out of stock. You know, sometimes, you know, those parts that are in certain types of gear, they become like hard to get or like illegal or whatever. The government says, oh, you can't use that component in any product no more. And then, you know, boom, now you're, you messed up. Now you got this big old clunk of nothing so you know that's something to always at least acknowledge but with the more modern pieces of gear it's good that we have all these clones and stuff like that that give us the ballpark sound and yeah, this is the chain. So the API preamp, you know, I love this too. I love to even take the API preamp and put it in front of a reverb to get um that Tory Lanes type of buzzing mainstream type of reverb. Because when you push the API preamp really hard, the mic pre, it starts to do like a beautiful type of buzzing. And I would really like that as well. When you do it subtly, you won't hear it. But when you start to crank it really hard and you pull down this output, you will get like that mainstream type of, you know, buzzing reverb, which is cool because that mainstream buzzing reverb helps the listener identify it because now the reaver has a different timbre compared to everything in the music all right then you see what we have here after that you know the little la2a um 
you know, a little LA 2A. We'd probably do maximum one to two DB just to really control, you know, Bryson's performance. Some singers like to go up or so, certain parts, they got to they gotta get a little higher or a little bit lower. So that's kind of what you want to help control the dynamic range. And the very last thing I would use for Bryson is because he calls his music trap soul. Of course, I would bring in something like a Hitsville chamber to give me some of that soul. That's what I really like about Bryson as well. And that brings me back to the API where the API has the mid-range forwardness. It will help because, you know, sometimes they be singing over 808 like trap beats they be singing over like rap beats and that 808 is thumping hard thumping hard so that's why I, I picked the api specifically too because it will help the um it will help the vocal that the singer is singing like not get bullied by the 808 so that's something to always pay attention to like the compression and everything like that you do want some density when somebody's singing over like a hip-hop beat and uh yeah this brings me back to trap soul you know so i have to understand that bryson tiller he calls his music trap soul so that's what we're going here for we're going for mainstream modern sound but also a little throwback analog vibe okay then we have the hitsville um chamber which models the motown chambers and stuff like that and you know the one thing about this reverb too is that this reverb is very quote-unquote sibilant to me and that makes a lot of sense because back in the day when they was sending to that um that reverb you got to think about it too they had the tape that was rolling off a lot of the highs taking away a lot of that fidelity and the very top so a situation like that too is it makes sense why this reverb is kind of like sibilant like when i use it in the mixing situation i always put a de in front of it because like the s's of this reverb like you will really hear it but it makes sense though because back in the days you know they had the tape to warm it you know before it even hit the, the chamber you know they had real rooms real spaces and they would move the microphones around to capture the reverb it's not like what it is right now and then lastly i would just use the ssl and i think brent fires he you know and i saw a picture of him in the studio he was with the ssl and i would be very aggressive on the top like how i kind of just said with the filter because i don't want a lot of that that, that that resonance to trigger that um reverb too much so bryson he would have his modern sound for his lead vocal but he would hear his reverb and he, it would feel like trap soul the sound that he's going for now that the artist is comfortable they can give me a great take and now they'd be like wow you're such a great engineer but not really the main thing is that i just made them feel good about themselves so that's the main thing about making music anytime any place it don't matter get to it stop making excuses stop wasting time you got all the tools here to make music even if you got a focus right or whatever nowadays it's like if you go to the store, you go to Verizon, you're trying to get you a little phone or whatever, okay? Then you go to the phone all the way, I think, the cheapest phone. The cheapest phone nowadays probably still got Bluetooth. You can still go on Facebook, Instagram. You can watch YouTube. It's still going to have all the stuff that you need to do the function, which is use a phone, talk to people. You feel me? The same thing is like microphones and equipment nowadays. You don't need the most expensive stuff. I mean, it will help you. You probably have a better experience. It will probably be faster, just like how getting a new phone, a new iPhone, the newest one will be a better experience. It'll probably be faster. But at the end of the day, it's all going to do the same thing, which is the job of making music so don't forget that today you know what bryson left us with anytime any place get to it just do it and then you could probably be like the next big star kind of like how he did you know i respect bryson tiller too from a personal level because he was just singing to take care of his daughter you see how high he this man is bro it's, it's character it's character that's gonna make somebody make it well the man he was doing his thing he was rapping singing just to take care of his daughter then he blew it and boof he just he dipped out now he's just taking care of his kid like he's not even in the spotlight like you got to respect that bro because some people they would probably be like oh yeah you know i'm a star now and this this and that but he just he's so family orientated and that's what i always talk about if you want to make good music well you got to work on your character because if you don't got no character then well as soon as you press play people not going to be able to get into that music you feel me because there's no there's no real genuine energy there's no real genuine character that they could believe like wow this guy is really everything about he says that he is you feel me so i just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my youtube family don't forget to like comment and subscribe we working we working any place anytime we working you know so you could get this free template down below and like i said don't forget to like comment and subscribe y'all and um you know appreciate you guys a lot my youtube family peace